everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. So this has been a weird week so far. Uh, it's already Wednesday and I have just had a lot of things going on like at work and just in my life in general and I have been really waffling about what project to start. As you've probably known if you have seen any of my recent videos as in like this year, I had planned to make the Daniel Deronda writing habit at like this point in the year after finishing my tea gown and I have been planning to make that writing habit um I think we're going on five years now at this point and at the beginning of January or sometime in January I kind of changed what fabric I was going to use for it because originally it was going to be the tea gown fabric which if you've seen the tea gown video you can probably tell that that would not have worked at all for a writing habit it was just way too thin way too light and so then I was able to procure more fabric, more appropriate weight, or hopefully I'm a little worried it's a little too heavy, for the Daniel Deronda writing habit. And you know what? My heart is just not in it right now. Part of me is like, I should just make the skirt because skirts are easy and that will get a lot of this yardage out of the way because I have eight yards of this just like sitting here plus another one yard piece over there because this is part of the fabric.com fiasco thing that they went through in January when they shipped out a bunch of yards instead of bolts so I have both a yard and also a bolt. So anyway my thought was I should just do the skirt and get it out of the way but I've never made a riding habit skirt before and so I just don't know if I know enough on how to make that. I know like one side of the skirt is longer than the other side and I have it written down of which side it's supposed to be. But I just don't know. I don't know. And so with all of this inner turmoil that's going on about me not knowing enough about writing habits or at least feeling like I'm not knowing enough about writing habits, I have built this project into this like mountain that it is hard for me to comprehend and to conquer I guess like I've built this project so far up in my head that it just seems like such a big deal even though it's probably not I mean I've already done a mock-up of the bodice the skirt like doesn't have any decoration it just has a little bit of like weirdness to the hem but I've built this up into such a mountain and I mean talk about making mountains out of molehills like this should be nothing but I just feel like my brain isn't up to that task this week yet and so I think I'm gonna put it off again I really don't want to do this to put it off again because I feel like every time I put it off that's when the mountain gets bigger and it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> and eventually I'm going to be having to climb Mount Everest to finish this project but my heart right now is telling me I want to make an 1830s dress and I've had an 1830s dress on my to make list I mean you saw it if you saw my 2021 plans video these are kind of the dresses that I am being inspired by I'll pop them up all around here and I just kind of want to make that plaid 1830s dress especially because flowers are starting to poke up the trees are starting to blossom like the cherry trees and I really want to take pictures in that 30s dress in all of the pretty flowers I know that they'll last through the summer but my brain is just telling me let's let's do fun easy 1830s because honestly 1830s is pretty easy and so I think we're starting an 1830s dress today I know that was a very very long-winded way to say this and you will have already seen that that's what I'm working on based on the thumbnail and the title and all of that of this video but I just kind of wanted to clue you in on what's going on in my brain right now because I feel like we all get this way sometimes our CADD just goes absolutely wild and we want to make everything and nothing at the same time <laughs> and that's where we are so we're gonna start on an 1830s dress 
I am hoping that I can maybe make the skirt part of it this week, or at least most of the skirt, because really with when the skirts are attached to bodices, you kind of need the bodice, but I just want to like make skirt stuff. That was Dora. So we're going to start on a skirt. The wonderful thing about 1830 skirts is that they're straight. <laughs> they're, they're flat panels. This one I've decided to actually have it close up the front because for one thing my roommate is planning on moving out and I won't have someone to help me with a back closing dress anymore. And for two I have found this fashion plate right here that has these adorable little bows up the front and I'm like oh my god I love it. So I think I'm going to make this bow front dress and make it out of the plaid like my other inspirations. I'm still trying to decide exactly what I want for the sleeves, but I have a while until I need to get there. I just know that they want to have multiple poofs and flounces and also a fitted section. So something in there is going to go together and we're not going to like be recreating anything in this. We're going to be combining a whole bunch of different 1830s looks to our lovely mid to late. I was thinking originally this was going to be late 1830s, but looking at the fashion plates, honestly, this is more like an 1837-ish dress. So a little bit of a fit in for eras that I'm missing. I have like early 1840s and I have mid slash earlier 1830s. So we'll slot this one nicely in and I'm excited to get started. So let's start on the skirt. So the key thing about 1830 skirts is that you want to have a lot of body in that skirt fabric. So I'm going to be using silk taffeta. I think I did a video where I found this silk taffeta and mentioned that I somehow found this at Joann's on the like clearance table as a bolt end and it wound up being something like six dollars a yard which is insane and it's kind of like a really weird color but I think it'll be nice for spring. This sort of yellow green pink beige plaid. It's very 30s. And then that will be flat lined with cotton organdy, which I just took out of the dryer and it looks like this. Yeah, so I have a lot of ironing in my future today. I think that maybe all I wind up doing today is trying to iron this into something straight. This somehow seems even stiffer than the cotton organdy that I'm used to and I don't know if it was just treated differently or what. I always buy my cotton organdy from Vogue Fabrics. I will link that down in the description. Highly, highly recommend them because their prices are just fantastic on cotton organdy. So that is where this is from, but this needs a lot of ironing. I think part of the problem is that generally I would recommend taking this out of the dryer when it is still damp. I didn't do that. I left this to go all the way through the dryer. There are a couple damp spots left in it, but overall it is not damp. It's completely dry. So a lot of, a lot of pressing, a lot of ironing, especially because cotton organdy is like so bad about getting off grain. It just gets off grain if you look at it wrong. So that is honestly the most challenging thing about 1830 skirts is getting your cotton organdy on grain. The nice thing about silk taffeta, especially a plaid silk taffeta, is that it is already on grain. There's like, you can't even get it off grain. It's impossible. So <laughs> that will be easy. This will be not too bad. And I will have to decide the pleat treatment that I want at the top. A lot of 1830s skirts, you get a mix of like knife pleats in the front and then cartridge pleats in the back or you might have knife pleats all the way around so I'm gonna look at kind of my inspiration and see which one I want to do see maybe which one I haven't done already on other skirts just to make things a little different but for now I'm gonna go iron so I'll check in with you later so I have been trying to work with this organdy and First off, it is even more off grain than normal organdy. And again, I buy all my organdy from Vogue Fabrics always, but it is more off grain and it's way stiffer and like less cotton feeling than what I'm used to for organdy. And I kind of felt that way even putting into the washer in the first place, but certainly coming out of the washer, it feels very different. And then touching some of my leftover organdy in comparison to this new stuff, it just feels like completely different fabrics. So unfortunately, of course, Vogue Fabrics has already closed for the day, so we can't give them a call right away. But what I'm gonna do right now is put it back in the washing machine see if that does anything and give them a call tomorrow if that doesn't do anything. And maybe this is a sign that I really do need to be working on my writing habit. 
but yeah i'm disappointed in the organdy this order because again i order from them all the time never had this problem before so i guess we'll have to see what happens so i washed the cotton organdy for the second time and pressed a section of it about a one yard section of it and it is still i mean it's so papery compared to what i'm used to and it is just not right i did burn test a tiny bit of the scrap and it burns as cotton so it is cotton it burns exactly like the other organdy but it just feels worlds different so i can't cut into that now i'm going to have to contact vogue fabrics and see what's going on there maybe they got a new supplier or what but i just don't know with this whether I should cut it off the grain since it refuses to move onto the grain because it's so papery, it's so stiff. It's not even that it's stiff, it's just that it is papery. It's thin, but it's it feels like paper. And so it refuses to be warped onto the grain, which is normally what you can do. You can like steam it a lot and just kind of pull it onto the grain. That's what you can do with the slightly softer stuff that I'm used to from Vogue Fabrics. But yeah, this I can't do that. And so I just don't know whether I should be cutting my skirt on the grain, which right now is like this, or whether I should be cutting it on the straight because that's what my silk panels are cut to. So I did cut my silk panels. They're just 48 and a half inches long and I just followed the plaid. So that was super, super easy. One thing that I'm a little bit nervous about is that the first panel that I cut it seems to be longer even though there's the same amount of like pink stripes running horizontally through it. So I'm slightly concerned about that for when I go to actually put it together because obviously I want my horizontal plaid stripes to match. So yeah, slightly concerned, but we'll get to that when we get to that, which is not anytime soon because I need the organdy first. So at first I thought with this setback of the organdy, oh, this is a sign that I should be working on the writing habit instead. And then I realized... I don't need to work on the writing habit, I could work on the bodice. <laughs> Duh. So I am going to start now on the bodice. I'm just gonna leave those panels pinned on the form for now. They already look really cute, even though they're like literally just panels of fabric that aren't sewn together and aren't pleated at the waist or whatever. I just like pinned it a bunch of places on the form and I already think it looks really cute. Like, I don't know, there's just something about plaid 1830s dresses that warms my heart. So anyway, I'm going to go to the bodice. Now, I have an 1830s bodice pattern somewhere because I've done a lot of 1830s before. So the first step is going to be finding what I used in the past. I should have potentially the Governor Ratcliffe bodice pattern somewhere because that's my most recent 1830s. And really the only difference to this one is going to be changing it to a front closure instead of the back closure. The bodice otherwise is the same because it's just a very plain bodice. Like I think it's two darts and then the shaped back. And I think that's it for this bodice pattern. So it's gonna be very, very plain. The only adornment is going to be those bows lots of piping because that's the thing about 1830s like every seam basically is piped except for the side seams I think like every other seam is piped and so lots of piping and then it's gonna have a nice pelerine because I realized like this plaid is gonna look atrocious on me I mean like with this green yellow pink combo like up by my face I feel like I'm looking dead already so if I separate that out by having a nice white pelerine collar that's going to really help all of that I can probably I'll probably make a new one and not just use the Governor Ratcliffe one but that could always be a stand-in for now too if I don't finish the other one in time I mean my goal is to make this quite quickly I'm hoping I won't have a setback with that organdy but my goal is to have this finished while there are still cherry blossoms on the trees because that would be darling of course I do have to figure out headwear too but that'll come that'll come oh wait I have a giant yellow 1830s bonnet that would totally work for this this has that exact shade of yellow in it I guess I don't have to figure out headwear okay so anyway I'm going to stop flabbing and I'm going to go find my bodice pattern I found the pattern. I'm not 100% positive that I used this for Governor Ratcliffe, but I think I did. This is actually the pattern from my other plaid dress. So this is 
actually a little bit closer in time era to what I'm making right now. That was like mid to early 30s and Governor Ratcliffe was a, like more on the early side but I think I used the same one for both. And part of why I think that is because I looked at my pictures of Governor Ratcliffe and I only have one dart in that too, but my inspiration dress definitely is two darts. It also, I feel like my inspiration dress is a lot curvier than what I'm used to. So I'm honestly tempted to try this over my 1860s corset instead of my like 1820s slash early 30s corset and see what a difference that makes. I might try it with both. But anyway, the main alterations that I'm making to this pattern, I'm going to attempt to do something that would get me a second dart, which is why I'm thinking that 1860s corset is necessary. I'm going to bring the front out by one inch because it's going to be the front closure. I'm not positive how that's gonna work like piping trim wise, I don't know. But I just wanna give myself that allowance of one inch and that way I can get the lap because right now the center front is here. I have a feeling I'll wind up taking a lot of that away, but I'm just doing it for now. I'm also going up one inch on the neckline because this feels low. If this is the plaid dress, I think that was a little lower and I think I want this one a little higher. And I'm doing the same in the back, even though I don't feel like this actually needs to go up one inch, I think it's gonna come dip back down. And then I folded in because this was a back closure, this had that extra one inch there for the closure. So I folded that in to get rid of it so that I'm just a half inch out from the center back. But this should work just fine. I am going to cut this out of twill because ideally if this works, which I kind of think it will, then I can just use the twill for my flat lining but I am still going to make a mock-up because it's always important that you make a mock-up unless you are 100% certain that your pattern is perfection. So I wound up talking to Vogue Fabrics this morning and they just became aware of the issue with the organdy and it's a problem like from their distributor changing mills or something like that or just switching something up. So anyway, they have refunded me for the purchase of the organdy and they don't have anything else to send to me currently. So I'm going to have to make do with this organdy because I wanted to work on this now. So what I have done is I've decided to cut this not on the grain, which scares me a little bit, but it so doesn't want to get moved onto the grain. Normally you can like pull it and move it onto the grain and it does not want to do that. So hopefully it will not move at any other point. So I <laughs> took a really long time cutting out the first piece somehow. I don't know why it took that long, but I think the grain was funkier at that end than it was like kind of towards more of the middle of my 10 yard piece that I ordered. So it, yeah, it took me like mm, an hour and a half, something like that to cut out one rectangular piece. So that was frustrating. But I have now cut out my three pieces here and I have flatlined it together. And that's really what I did was I used my silk that I cut out yesterday to figure out the shape of the organdy. So I like laid it all flat on my table, pinned everything that I could on my table, then moved it to the next section. So basically I'm, I was pinning midway through the fabric so that it would be, I knew for sure, a full flat section. Then I'd move it to the next one, do that same thing, move it to the next one, and remove all of those middle pins by the end. So I've done that now for all three sections, and I'm going to let it hang on the form just in case anything seems to want to squidge overnight, and I will serge those together after they've hung, so probably tomorrow. And... Hopefully it will all work. I'm a little worried because it's like, it still feels so papery, but 1830 skirts are poofy like that. So hopefully it'll work because I didn't want to have to get organdy from somewhere else where I wasn't familiar with their stock anyway. So it might wind up being the same mill. So <laughs> we'll see. This is an experiment and we'll see how it goes. So I feel a bit bad because <laughs> I have not been vlogging this project of the little bit that I have done since I last spoke with you. And uh, part of that, a lot of that is because I didn't want to put on makeup. <laughs> so anyway, you get this, which is partial makeup right now. But I wanted to uh, tell you what I've done on the 1830s dress since I last saw you. Because when I last saw you, I had all of the silk 
flat lined but just pinned to the kind of bad organdy and it was hanging on the form to see if any of the organdy would like drop to get back on the grain it didn't so it's still like stiff as anything and I hope I'm not gonna regret just making this project with it anyway but I went ahead and I surged around the edges of the silk so that I got all that excess organdy off and it was all the same size panel and then I seamed together the panels so there's a seam in the center front and that's where the opening is going to be and then there are seams kind of probably that are going to hit like right here and so I seamed all those together and then I started to pleat the skirt it was kind of a dilemma for me of like how I wanted to pleat the skirt but in the 1830s it kind of seems like the two most common methods are knife pleats all the way around or knife pleats most of the way around cartridge pleats in the back that does not include lightweight cotton dresses those are typically just gathered or cartridge pleated but for silk dresses it's the knife pleats or knife pleats cartridge pleats combo and i've done the knife pleats cartridge pleats combo before that's what i did on on my governor ratcliffe dress and i believe my other dress my other plaid dress is knife pleats all the way around if i remember correctly so either way i've done it before so with this one I have pretty much decided that I'm going to do the combo of the two and the other weird thing about the knife pleats in this era that I have not done before is that most of the time the pleats are actually like pointing inwards so the crease of the pleat like the pleat edge points inwards towards the front which is weird for me I usually point them outwards and that's what I have on the other dresses so I decided I'm gonna like do the thing point them inwards. So I started to pleat my skirt and I got one panel done up until I reached the side seam and then realized I forgot to put in my pockets. Who even am I? I can't make this dress without pockets. Like what? Now granted, because of the way the skirts are arranged, the pockets are probably going to hit about here which is a little bit weird but it's still better to have weird pockets than to have no pockets at all because duh pockets so I have now taken some scrap cotton and cut out my pocket pieces and surged around the outside of those pocket pieces so I can undo those seams at least a little bit and get those pockets in there now one of the weird things that I was experiencing while doing up my seams is that I think I mentioned this maybe when I was pinning it, but basically the edges of the silk, the grain of the plaid twists, tilts something, it's funky. And it did that even before I added the organdy. And so seaming them together is really odd. And also like I was trying to match my plaids, but I swear sometimes the stripes are different widths. Maybe this is why it was on the discount table at Joann's. Maybe it was a really irregular weave. I don't know. But that is what I was finding. Like, for example, this stripe right here is definitely narrower over here than it is over here. So that's great. So I kind of matched my plaids-ish. I don't think it'll be obvious because this is such a busy pattern. And there's actually like, I had to kind of stretch and pull and ease to get them to match from side to side because of the weirdness. And because of that, you also get a little bit of like it bending. I don't know if that comes off on the camera, but basically it's kind of going like this at the seam, which if it wasn't such a busy plaid would really probably drive me bonkers, but it is such a busy plaid and such a full skirt I don't think that's going to be visible that much at all and even in the center front I had already decided that that seam is actually going to be covered up. The two things I was thinking about based on my inspiration plates were either to do some pretty chunky piping down the center or on some of them that I've seen they actually have a bias strip that is a flat press strip that goes down the center and I decided that that was going to be more of a pop with this plaid than the piping. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a bias strip. I have not yet cut it, but I think it's going to be about an inch, inch and a half wide, somewhere in there. 
and it'll be a complete 45 degree bias on the plaid and that will go right down the front and then the bows will be applied on top of that so I think that's gonna have to be hand sewn I don't think there's any other way I can do it but that's what's going to happen that will happen probably after I pleat it but before I incorporate it with the bodice or anything like that because this is going to be attached to the bodice you know if I ever try on my mock-up which I haven't done yet so yeah gotta open the seam up put my pockets in and then I can finish my pleating but it looks nice so far okay that's it for now I'm gonna get back to work so I haven't actually put the pockets in because when I stopped filming before I realized I was almost out of sewing time. What I did instead was I pressed all of the pleats that I had already done into place. So I do have those done on both sides. And then I pinned it on the form and realized that where I started the pleats was like one stripe too far out. And instead of repleating everything, I think what I'm going to do, oh, I double pinned this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just redo this seam because by redoing the seam so that it's just a huge seam allowance. For one thing, it might mean that I don't need to make a placket. I was going to make a placket for the front opening here, but for two, it will take away that extra motif so that the pleats won't be so wide starting in the center they'll be more like that I can't do this with one hand but they'll be a little bit more like that instead so that will look better and yeah then I think I can avoid that pocket and maybe it won't look so <laughs> messy like I was talking about how I had to ease it in I don't know that it'll really change with me changing the seam allowance heck it might make it worse but this is also the bit that's going to be covered by that bias stripe so like I'm not worried about it looking so terrible because it, you won't see it. So yeah, that's where we are right now. I will fix those pockets tomorrow. We've reached the end of another night and I know it does not look very different. I did take in this center front seam. So this now has a nice big lap over. So I don't need a placket. That's really great. I'm excited about that. I know that that's a weird thing to be excited about, but I'm happy about that. And then this will have the trim that goes over it too. So it will actually be a slightly even larger lap because the trim will go out a little bit. It'll be centered right here. So that is all done and I have pockets, but they are so far to the back. Let me see if I can find them. There it is. So it's like on the butt, basically. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about that or a little, I don't know, that's just going to be weird, but like they're there even if I don't use them, which I guess is a good thing. And I've also basted all of these pleats down. That said, I'm not sure they're going to be able to stay where they are because A, pockets are on the butt, and B, I have, I think, 22 inches right here to be cartridge pleated down into what I believe is less than five. It's five inches on here on the dress form, but Antoinette is usually like an inch bigger than me, I think, so this might be less than five, and I'm a little bit concerned about getting it down all that way. I mean, it's cartridge pleating, so like probably it'll be okay, but I also wanted just a little bit wider bit of cartridge pleating. Like I think I wanted a good six plus, six to seven inches of cartridge pleating, which obviously that is not. So anyway, that's where I am on the skirt right now. I hope to get that cartridge pleating done tomorrow. I'm working every day at my office work today. So like I wind up getting home later, being tired, going to bed earlier. So it doesn't result in much sewing. So that's where we are. Also, this organdy is like, oh, so crunchy stiff. That's why it's making this weird wrinkly bit. That and it's too long right now. It needs to be hemmed, obviously, but it's hitting the ground. And then it's also just making that weird crunchy bit. Uh, so that's where we are. Still haven't tried on the mock-up. It's just sitting right there for the bodice, but I'm getting decently far along on the skirt. So Again, hope to get that cartridge pleating done tomorrow and ideally try on the bodice mock-up. We shall see. So super quick little update before we go into the actual cartridge pleating of the skirt. I did decide to undo the last two knife pleats on each side going around into the back because I just wasn't going to get enough cartridge pleats. I measured how many knife pleats I had previously and I had about like 18 inches on each side, which... 1830s doesn't take in my waist as much. In fact, sometimes it actually adds to my waist. So that would allow me between four to five inches of cartridge plates total in the center back. 
and I checked the last two dresses that I have made that have cartridge plates in the back uh, for this era and both of them have almost four inches on each side <laughs> of the center back so that was not gonna be enough if I just had four inches total because in general you want the cartridge plate sections at least what I have seen to kind of line up with your bodice back seams now Really, that means that I shouldn't be doing these cartridge plates until I fit the bodice, at least the bodice mock-up, so that I know how big that section is going to be. I have used this pattern before, so I am fairly confident at how it's going to be, so I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to start my cartridge plates a little bit farther out on each side than I necessarily need, and that's kind of twofold. So for one thing, I think I might need one more knife plate. I undid two on each side to get a good amount of cartridge plates in the back. And I think I may have only needed to undo one. However, you can't really add to cartridge plates without like manually squidging things because it's on a thread. But what you can do is if you have threaded through your cartridge plates, you can always just flatten out the ends of it where like the knots of the thread are. So that's what I went with. I just came in the room, so that's why we're jingling. So yeah, I'm going to start my cartridge plates a little bit farther out and go a little bit farther out just so that I know that I have enough and that I can always flatten those out and or turn those flat bits into knife plates afterwards. So now we are going to start the cartridge plates. Let me show you how to mark this up. And then the actual sewing of the cartridge plates will actually be found in last week's Q&A video because I'm going to film these concurrently. And the actual act of sewing the cartridge plates, if you are interested in that, will be in last week's video. So I will leave a link to that down below. Okay, so to mark the cartridge plates, we're doing quarter inch cartridge plates on here, and I'm actually going to mark them starting at the center and then going out to each side so that I don't wind up being off side on one, one side. So I've already made my center mark. This is just the center of this back panel, and now I'm going to draw marks every quarter inch here. I am going to use a clear plastic ruler to do that. If you have a check or a plaid that has a more regular stripe, you might be able to just go off of your, like, pattern in your fabric. And what I've done in the past is sometimes for, especially for things like Elizabethan cartridge plates or Tudor cartridge plates, anything like that, where it's a lot thicker, heavier fabrics, you can actually back this with like a small check that will give you a quarter inch or a half inch or whatever size you need because cartridge plates can vary in width. I'm just happen to be doing quarter inch because I think that is more common for this era. But these skirts are already stiff because of this terrible organdy and I just don't need any extra bulk in there because it's not going over a big bum pad or anything either. So I'm just going to mark it on here where the quarter inch is and then I will show you how the threads go in. So you can see here that I've now marked all of my quarter inch spaces. I just went along with the ruler and did them all with friction pen, which if you are looking for either of these items, I will link them down below. I highly, highly recommend, you know, having a clear plastic ruler and also the friction pens are great. Normally you can erase with the friction pens, but honestly with this, I just did it all in the seam allowance. So none of this is going to show anyway, because it is going to be underneath the bodice and in all those cartridge plates. So now that I've done all of those, I can use the rest of this line for each one where each one is to know where the stitches go. With cartridge plates, you take multiple threads and you pull them through at the same time. So I'm going to be using three threads on here. You want to use a stronger thread like a buttonhole twist or something sturdy or at least multiple threads. This one you can see is kind of a thicker thread here. I am not sure what kind this is called, but it's just a Coates and Clark thread. And ideally you want something that is going to kind of go with your fabric because your thread is going to stay in there and it, there is a possibility that I might show. Now with mine, I mean, I've got lots of colors in here, so I happen to have a pink one. I had a green one somewhere, don't know where that went. So I'm just going to use the pink. And basically you are going to go through and do those three at kind of whatever spacing you want with the thicker fabric stuff, you know, when you're doing like Elizabethan or whatever, then you can 
go farther or you should go farther. I find that with 1830s, you don't need to go that far. So your first one will probably be like about a quarter inch down, then maybe another hmm, three quarters of an inch or an inch down. And again, three quarters of an inch or an inch down from there. So you don't need it to go that far, but you want something that's going to keep your pleats all in place. So I'll show you how to start those threads. And then we're going to jump back to last week's video again for the actual pleating. I have threaded three needles with a double strand of the thread with a nice big knot at the end, just a double knot. And I'm going to start by going into the fabric from the back side because you don't want those knots to show on the outside. So I'm starting with one of them about a quarter inch down. I'm just using the plaid here, the plaid pattern. So I'm gonna use this stripe for that first one and just pull that all the way through, trying not to get it caught on other extraneous threads like I just did. And then you can put your next needle in or you can start to sew through the lines. I'm going to sew through the lines for just a second so that you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna go, every time I hit one of the pink lines that I've drawn on here, I'm gonna go along that line and just go in and out, in, in and out, like nice, big kind of like basting stitches and you can just kind of put like as many as you want on that needle and just go through and then pull your needle through out of the way and for now I'm starting with it just flat I will eventually pull these up your thread by the way uh, besides the fact that it's doubled it should be long enough even when doubled that it will go through and past the entire section that's going to be pulled up so it doesn't need to be super long like as long as the fabric itself it just needs to be long enough for that section of finished cartridge plates so for me that's about eight inches of cartridge pleats, plus I wanted that leeway to flatten out the end. So I wanted mine about like, hmm, let's say 12 to 15 inches long, which I think I've got actually about 20, so that's plenty. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the next one. I'm not gonna make them super far away, so I'm gonna use this pink line as my next line, which I think is about actually, probably close to five eighths inches away from the first one. And again, we're going to start it with the same spot and go through remembering where those lines hit on the plaid repeat because you want those even for each strand of thread that goes through. And I'll usually take it about as far as I took the first thread. So that's all that was and then pull that through. And then you do the same thing with the third one. Again, ideally keep them about even between each one. So I'm gonna go with another approximately five eighths inches down. I'm just eyeballing these by the way, but I think that the repeat is like the top of this yellow line is approximately five eighths inches. And again, just follow where your last threads went into on the pattern. If you're working with something that does not have a pattern, you may want to draw your friction lines all the way down because if you're working with a solid, that's going to be way easier unless you back it with check material like I mentioned earlier. Sometimes with the third one, I find that it's harder to like get everything on the needle because you have a lot of this fabric down here at the bottom. So I will pull up before, oh, actually that was where I hit. So look, now we have all three of these. And basically what this looks like once you've pulled it up is you squish it like that. So all of that just becomes that little bit of cartridge pleating there. Okay, now I'm going to do the rest of this cartridge pleating on last week's video. <laughs> so I will see you on this week's video once this is done. If you have not caught the Q&A, I will again link that in the description. You can go check it out now. And now for the most satisfying bit, taking the ends, your threads, and creating your pleats.
So I put it back on the dress form and this is what it looks like at the moment, which does make me think seeing all of this that's like pulled out to fit around the waist, that probably I will wind up putting one knife pleat back in on each side because that will balance everything out. But it does look very nice as is and I won't know about that stuff really until I'm able to attach it to the bodice. So for now, the threads just live on the ends here, you just leave the needles in and everything, you know, just be careful with them. But really we won't be working with this skirt pretty much at all anymore until we go to do the bodice anyway. The only thing that should probably be done on the skirt before we get to the bodice is to put that strip of trim down the center front, but I'm going to wait on that also until while I'm cutting the bodice because I'll be cutting that at the same time that I will be cutting the piping for the bodice. So that means it is bodice mock-up time. All right, so I have the bodice mock-up on here. The one thing that I'm noticing instantly is that the back seems like really really large down here i don't know what's going on there because my side seam is lined up right on my side where it should be but the back is like humongous and i don't know if that was just like a thing of translating it from a back closing to a front closing it seems to be okay in the top of the back but i must have done something with the bottom of the back. So I almost don't know if it's worth me pinning the front of this shut and trying to do darts and stuff when the back is that far off, but it probably is because as long as I can keep my side seam steady, then I should be good and then I'll know how much to take in the back. So I think I'm gonna give that a try, pin this shut, pin some darts out and make sure my side seams stay where they go. So here's the dilemma that I'm facing. As I mentioned before, I think the bodice inspirations that I've been looking at seem to all have two darts on each side. And I figured that might be hard to do with the corset that I typically use for 1830s, which is like my late 20s, 30s corset. It's my Regency corset. I wear it for everything from 1800s through 1830s. But anyway, I figured it'd be difficult to do two darts with this because it's just not that curvy of a corset. I mean, Regency, it's like, you know, pretty natural. So I thought about maybe the idea of doing my 1860s corset instead, which is my next corset shape. And so I went and did some research and looked online at Exton corsets and just to see what I could find that was labeled at all 1830s or even like 1840s. And honestly, this style of corset minus the straps, but this style of corset goes through like the early 1840s. So there's just no way that in like 1837, they would have an 1860s looking corset. So I'm going with this corset, but as you can see right here, I have one dart on each side and they're tiny. Like there is not much going on in those darts at all. There is no way at all that I can get two darts on each side. So that's just what it's gotta be. And <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna have to live with the whole one dart on each side. The rest of the bodice I think is doing pretty well. I did pinch out the backs here. I don't know how much I pinched out, but I feel like it's maybe five eighths inch or three quarters or something like that. And I will do that better and taper it out when I'm not wearing it because I can't reach this part to pin into. But I can tell that it's fitting by the time it gets around my shoulder blades. So it's just going to be tapering it out to there on those two side back seams. And otherwise, again, the front is fitting really well. I can't remember, I'm gonna have to look at the earlier bit when I was talking about cutting this out because I can't remember how much I thought I was allowing myself as the center front. For some reason I was thinking that I allowed myself more than like five eighths or three quarters of an inch. I know that I was gonna do a facing, but I thought I had more there. So I'm gonna have to watch those earlier clips because Right now I'm getting about three quarters for most of this down to about like five eighths or even half an inch right here at the apex of the bust. So it does curve out and then probably getting close to one inch right here. Now, something that I've done in the past on 1830s is that I have actually allowed this to not sink because they did have that very round look right here. And so this could be padded out. Literally in my archery dress bodice, I tend to stick like a sock, a, a fluffy sock in here to make that, but I could also like sew in some pads. I probably should do that. So I may do that. I don't know that I like this neckline. 
1830s were usually a little more boat neck ish and I am going to be wearing like a lace collar not quite pelerine but large lace collar with this is my plan anyway so like the neckline itself doesn't really matter because it will be covered but I don't feel like this neckline cut is quite right I might extend it out a little bit here just to make it slightly more boaty and then I think I'm actually pretty happy with where this is hitting off of the sides of the shoulders because we are starting to get the dropped look that like the 1840s took to extremes. We are starting to get that in the 1830s. So your shoulder seams should not be up here. They really should be more out here. So I think I'm pretty close. I'm within a half inch and I can always take that up in the final when I go to try on a sleeve. It's a little bit harder with like testing that out on 1830s because this is piped. Uh, these are piped. What else is piped? The waist is piped. The neckline should probably be piped. They really liked piping. So wherever you can put piping, that's great in their book. And that's something that I'm going to have to remember to cut out as I'm cutting out the plaid of the bodice because it needs to go within the bodice construction. But all that said, I think we are close enough here that once I figure out if I do need to increase the overlap of the front or if that's all facing, once I figure that out, I will be able to cut out the plaid. If I don't need to increase the facing, then I, it's great. I can use the twill as is for my flat lining. Unfortunately, if I do need to increase the overlap, then I've got to cut out new twill as well. So fingers crossed that I said it was only, you know, three quarters of an inch or whatever. But yeah, pretty close. I mean, again, I've used this pattern before, so like I expected it to basically work. And I think we're just about right with everything other than that seam right there. So yeah, once I take that up, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to flail wildly with a marker so that I know approximately where it fits, which is like my shoulder blades, and then taper it out to those pink marks. So that's what I do on backfitting stuff because that's hard. Okay, I'm ready to move on and watch those clips back and then cut things out. I will see you later. So I did think that I was going to get more done on this 1830s dress this week, which actually this video encompasses like about a week and a half's worth and I still only got that much done, but you know, whatever. But instead, right after that last clip ended, I actually wound up spending my Friday night trying to hunt down a leftover vaccine dose unsuccessfully, but spent a long time, my entire evening, waiting for that. And then on Saturday, I had the best birthday present ever of actually getting called on a list that I'd put my name on that morning for a leftover vaccine. So I am now vaccinated and I thought, or at least with my first dose, and I thought that that was a lot more important than working on this dress. And then I spent the rest of the day with my lovely friend Emily and then also some of my other friends outside socially distanced and had a little birthday celebration for Emily and I, which I mentioned before, but we had a nice little tea and it was just fantastic. And yeah, you know, compassionate deadlines. I'm going to continue working on this project next week. I thought it was a little bit much to try to shove all of the cutting and the piping and how to do piping and all of that into this vlog anyway. So that's where we will be beginning the next vlog. I am going to be cutting out the silk for the bodice and I'm also going to be cutting out the piping and that center front trim and I'm going to show you all how to do piping. So if you've ever wondered how to do piping, do make sure that you check back next week because I'll be doing a full tutorial on that included with next week's vlog. So I do hope that you enjoyed this week's vlog. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you would like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Kofi account down below. And I'd also like to thank my Edwardian level patron, Heidi. Thank you all so much for joining me. Have a wonderful week and stay safe and healthy. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!